I currently have a quasi-series where I critique and rate RuneScape banks in the order they came into the game, but I was conflicted on how to approach bank chests. You see, bank chests are not banks, but rather are places around Gilinor where a player can access their bank. Very different. So, because while these are not in fact banks, I feel as a place where you can access your bank, these chests do deserve acknowledgement. Instead of critiquing each one fully as we've done with the actual banks, I've taken the list of 40-ish bank chests and ranked them in order extremely arbitrarily. Coming in at number 41, we have the Sulfur Mine bank chest. This bank chest is shoved away behind this random piece of wall and is right next to this sulfur field. Now, I'm pretty sure if there was a question on Family Feud as what's the worst smell in the world, number one answer might be sulfur. Uh, this is directly next to the sulfur fields. A terrible place in the game, a terrible place to be in general. This is the worst bank. If you died and then were reincarnated into a bank chest in old school RuneScape, I think this would be the bank chest you'd become if in your previous life you were a huge asshole. This bank chest is absolutely terrible. Coming in at number 40, we have Damon's Crater, AKA the Bounty Hunter bank chest. Um, I'm not quite sure what to say here other than I absolutely hate it over here. I think both these bank chests are terrible. This is a terrible place to be. I don't like it here. Uh, I don't think anybody should like it here. Not as bad as the Sulphur bank chest, but I don't think that's saying too much. The one redeeming thing is I think the actual aesthetic of the bank chest itself is pretty cool looking with the gold falling out, but that is not near enough to move this up anywhere in the list. Coming in at 39, we have the four PVP world bank chests. I wanted to just group all these together as they're kind of just strange and only available on PVP worlds. This was a very hard one to do, but they're kind of just out in the open. I don't, I'm not quite sure what to say on these other than they're just not spectacular by any means. And just use as a necessity for these worlds. So I think toward the back of this list at 39 is a very appropriate place for these bank chests to be. Now at number 38, starts to get a little bit interesting. We have the Mining Guild bank chest, surrounded by some boxes, some torches. There's not a lot aesthetically going on here, um, but there is a lot of brown, I'll tell you that. And it's a terrible place down here. When you're down here in the mines and all you see is brown, all you hear is some sweat, power mining iron. You look over to your right, there's just dirt and rocks you look over to your left there's brown boxes what's there to love about this place i'll go ahead and answer that for you there's not really anything at all this bank chest is very much a victim of its location it's not a good bank chest number 38 okay coming in at number 37 we have the port Cazard bank chest aka the fishing trawler bank chest out of all the bank chests that are near a body of water this is absolutely far and above the worst one. It unfortunately finds itself so far down on this list because of its association with Fishing Trawler, the unequivocally worst minigame in RuneScape. It's not even close. There's also nothing spectacular about this bank chest that's just kind of shoved over here next to the docks. I don't love it in any sense of the word. Number 37, again, a very appropriate place for this to be. Now at number 36, we actually make our way back to the mining guild, now going to Motherlode Mine. The Motherlode Mine bank chest is marginally better than the mining guild bank chest. I give a few extra points for a couple of things here. One, you gotta love Prospector Person at least a little bit. Two, I like this pink mole that sits in between this waterway thing. But again, we find a bank chest that is very much a victim of its location. It is just in a terrible place. The Motherlode Mine is not a place that any player wants to spend a ton of time, or at least 99% of players, or at least me. Not a great bank chest. Now at 35, we actually have a bank chest that I was not expecting to be this far down on the list. We have the bank chests of Neat Is Not. Now a couple of things that jump off the page. First of all, there are four bank chests, way too excessive. There does not need to be four. There should probably just be one. Number two, it's shoved back in this little back, almost closet-like area. It's connected directly to the general store. Why are these bank chests inside the general store, just in the back of it? These bank chests are crammed, unremarkable, and to just be frankly honest, disappointing. This is a very, very disappointing bank chest. Coming in at 34 on our list is the Hosidious Kitchen. Now, frankly, this one could have been even further down on the list. It's a building surrounded by dead plants hanging on the outside. There's a chef screaming orders to everyone. There's players running back and forth. It's chaotic. 
There's meat hanging on the walls. There's buckets of fish, so this place fucking stinks. And the bank chest itself is just shoved against the wall. This is an absolutely atrociously bad bank chest. Now, I realize this bank chest is used for its utility. Um, I'm not pulling any punches just because of that. This bank chest sucks. It's just a bad bank chest. Now, coming in at 33, we have the Mage Arena bank chest. This bank chest is obviously found in Deep Wildy, but it is a safe area. This is the first bank chest we've encountered where there's not really anything quote unquote wrong with it. It's just very, very unremarkable and in a unremarkable location. Everything's gray, just very normal. Nothing terrible about it, but obviously nothing great either. I don't love this bank chest. I don't hate it, but I don't, I don't love it. The 32nd bank chest on our list is Trouble Brewing. It has a very nice flower next to the bank chest. It also has a very nice deposit box next to the bank chest on sitting on a table. It looks quite nice with an assortment of, I'm assuming, mini game prizes next to that bank chest. So, you know, there are some things working for this bank chest in its favor. However, the grass is way too high. You know that there are all kinds of bugs crawling in this grass, mosquitoes. You can just tell that this is an area infested with all kinds of things. I can't imagine standing at this bank chest for more than 15 minutes because I'm sure you would be covered in chigger bites or at least sweating or itchy or just uncomfortable in whatever you're wearing. So for those reasons and it just kind of being pushed up against the wall in the middle of this building, I don't love that either. Not a terrible bank chest, but absolutely has some faults. Now at 31, we have the blast furnace. I was a little conflicted on this one, right? There's a lot of loud machinery that's not very enjoyable. I think there's um, maybe some chemicals and different things flying around. It's also probably a very hot room, but this area has a little bit of character to it. There's something like a liveliness to this area that I do enjoy. So I think it's a very fair rating to have this blast furnace at 31. Now rounding out our 30s, at number 30, we have Barbarian Assault. The Barbarian Assault bank chest is quite possibly the most boring bank chest on this list. It is brown along with almost every single other thing in this room, although I do quite like the room because of the statue and the cool board and I don't know. There's like a feeling here that I do like, but I mean, God, couldn't this bank chest been like a just a little bit better, a little bit more unique. The the chest itself, it just almost camouflages into the wall and the objects around it. I just don't like it. However, I don't know who this is, but I gotta give bonus points for this guy being right next to the bank chest. This guy seems like an absolute character. I'm a big fan of this guy. At 29, we have the Winter Todd bank chest. Points to this bank chest for being in a very unique area and place. I think this may be the only bank chest found in like a snowy region. However, the downside to that is when you're standing at this bank chest, it's gonna be really fucking cold. So I think that that's gotta take away from this. You can't be standing here all day. You might get frostbite. I'm sure the tent provides maybe a little bit of insulation, but probably not much. It's also shared with this bed and boxes. So I don't really wanna be utilizing a bank when somebody's sleeping or working in here. This bank chest has character. There's a nice theme. It's got a nice almost flavor to it, I guess I would say, but there are definite negatives. Coming in at 28, we have the Giants Foundry bank chest. I actually really like the look of this bank chest. This wood with the kind of accents on it. I think it looks really nice. Now the area itself, bit of a different story, right? The bank chest is surrounded by lava. That's got to be extremely hot. I think the machines in this room are probably very loud. I would also imagine the acoustics of this room make the machine noise carry quite a bit, which would be very unpleasant. But at the same time, there's just an element of this bank chest I like, and I don't exactly know what it is, but this just kind of feels like the most blue collar bank chest there is. So I think 28 is a very appropriate place for it. Bank chest number 27, and this could quite possibly be a very controversial one. At 27, we have the Castle Wars bank chest. Now, when I think of a bank chest in old school RuneScape, I do first think of this bank chest. It's the first one I think of, and I think that that matters. I think that that's important. However, this room is so unremarkable, and the space that this bank chest is next to is equally unremarkable. It's right across from the portals of the Castle Wars minigame, easily accessible by most, if not all, players, making it a highly trafficked and highly convenient bank chest. I think that this is the fast food version of a bank chest, which I'm just not a fan of. Again, there are positives, and there's not a ton of negatives. It's just 
really, really unremarkable. Now our bank chest for number 26 is Soul Wars. This is a strange one because I think the first impression when you first come here, it's a positive one. You're like, oh, it's a good looking bank chest. It's surrounded by green and trees. And then you start to look around and you're next to a bunch of graveyards. You're next to a big yellow glowing portal that looks like shit. You're next to a weird guy holding a staff. This bank chest appears to kind of just be thrown down in the middle of somebody's camp. This is a very... This is a very confusing bank chest. This was, to be candid, a very difficult one for me to rate, as I just feel like there's a kind of a collision of two ideas here. I went back and forth a good amount here, and like it or not, I think 26 is a very fair place to land for this bank chest. Now at 25, we have the Shanty Pass, an area surrounded by armed guards. I'd say that's a negative. It's got this nice awning. I'd say that's a positive. It's hot as shit outside. I'd say that's a negative, but I'd rather be hot than cold, so I'd say that's a positive. But I do like that it's right next to the entrance to the actual desert itself. It feels like the gateway to the desert, and there's something unique about that. It's also next to these cool skull signs, which that's those things are badass looking. Worth noting though as well that the bank chest itself aesthetically is incredibly unremarkable. These next three bank chests, I think these were the three I had the most difficult time rating and figuring out where they should lie. And we're going to start with this one right here, number 24, the Shazian Encampment. God, this is a difficult one to rate. On one hand, I really like the color scheme here. I like kind of how dark it feels feels here. It's a very just well detailed, nicely lit, finely colored place. However, if you're standing at this bank chest, you're gonna be standing on mud or planks of wood and you're surrounded by people who are training for battle and who knows, maybe this place will get attacked. Um, also, everybody here seems pretty obsessed with war and I don't know if you've ever hung out with anybody that just loves war, but um, in my eyes, they're not a great hang. So I don't know, this one was really, really hard. I, I just put it at 24, some negatives, but some great positives. I hope that's fair. At number 23, we have the Ape Atoll bank chest. Now, when you finish Monkey Madness 2 and nothing is aggressive to you on this island anymore, I'll be honest, I feel relief every time I come here still. And I completed this quest so long ago, I still feel relief that nothing's attacking me. So. It feels great to just bank stand here in general and feel safe. I've also got this at 23 because I just feel like one, it's it's located in a very unique spot in the game, but also it's the cutest little bank. This little bank chest on this little table in this little room, there's something about it I just love. And who is this with his green shirt? He's looking great. Number 22, we have the Blast Mine. Now there are actually four bank chests down here at the Blast Mine. And I gotta say, the first time I walked down here, I was thinking that I was gonna absolutely hate it, and I hated it for a little bit, and then I spent a little time walking around, and I gotta be honest, I really came around to this place. It's on the outskirts of Lovakinj, which means you're kind of escaping the heat of the city, and all the lava surrounding the city, and it's just found in this little quarry. I think there's something quite nice about standing at one of these bank chests and this giant, big, open space, just nothing but you and some rocks and these chests and the stars above. Plus, if for any odd reason people came down here and you wanted just a little bit of alone time, there are four bank chests down here. Just skip on over to another one. Now, number 21, we have the Legends Guild. Now, I think there is a lot to like about this one. There's windows letting in some nice natural light. We have some nicely decorated, suits of armor, that's looking great. There's a deposit box, torches for additional lighting, and a very nice rug in the middle. Plus you're in the Legends Guild. Now I was thinking that this one would actually be a pretty underrated place, but I gotta say I'm really annoyed and thrown off by the fact that there are three bank chests in here. Please just have the one against the wall right at the far end of the room. It makes no sense to have these two other bank chests kind of in the middle of the room. Additionally, if you get a little claustrophobic, if there are a lot of people in here, even two or three people, this is gonna feel like a crowded space. Now our first bank to crack the top 20 at number 20 is Temple of the Eye, otherwise known as the Guardians of the Rift bank chest. Now I think it's probably pretty clear at this point that I'm typically not very keen on the mini game bank chest, but I think this one is actually fairly decent. The colors around this place are spectacular. There's a lot going on. There's nice depths to the layers when you kind of just look down. It scales down very nicely in this in this area. So when you're bank standing, or I, I suppose standing at a bank chest, it's really nice to have all these just different depths and layers and textures 
and colors. However, it is obviously associated with a mini game, meaning at times you're gonna get massive crowds, you're gonna get a bunch of shit all around you, people dropping things and running back and forth. I mean, well, it can just be a lot of chaos. You've also got this fella right here who stands next to the bank at all times, so if you don't get along with him, I mean, you're you're probably in trouble. Final note here is that I think the gold trim works really well on the actual aesthetic of the bank chest itself. Now, coming in at number 19, we have the wood cutting guild. I'm curious if people thought this was gonna be higher or lower, but to me, this is a very appropriate place, and let me tell you why. First of all, of all the guilds, I actually think the woodcutting guild is a little bit overrated. And without careening too far down that tangent, I will just say that this bank chest room, it's not that great either. It's a little small. There are tables and stools. People are going to be sitting in here. The size of the room that this bank chest is in is nice. It's a nice, decent size, but it's just a little too crowded for me. I think the woodcutting guild is perceived as a very peaceful place, but this is a very high trafficked area. You're going to be hearing a lot of noise. You're going to hear a lot of axes chopping into trees. So because this is a little bit of a higher traffic area and there's a lot going on, I mean, right outside this bank is some pretty prominent yew trees that, that I think players frequent. This is going to be just a noisier area. And sometimes that's what you want, actually. You know, sometimes I like going into a public space just to feel a little less alone. Maybe I've been stuck at home all day. It's quiet. You know, you want some noise, you want some action, but I would say the majority of the time, it's just not what I'm looking for. I might come to regret ranking this bank chest so high, but at number 18, we have Mount Quidamortem. I just think if you're gonna put a bank chest in a tent, this is the way to do it. Mount Quidamortem's kind of in the middle of nowhere, but obviously next to the chambers of Zarek. Feels like it's in the desert, but it's not really the desert at all. I don't really understand, actually, the climate of this area very much. It's the only place in Zaya, I think, that looks like this. But the bank chest itself is in this tent that doesn't feel too big, it doesn't feel too small. There's a really nice rug laying on the ground of this area. There's obviously boxes in here, but if it's used for storage, that's fine. It's not like other areas that have boxes and beds and all kinds of other shit with it. I also like this, I don't exactly know what this is, I'm gonna say snake head, but it's just a nice room that has a nice vibe to it, and as soon as you exit this little tent, you come out to this nice wide open space on this large plateau. I think it's a nice place, I think it's a nice bank chest. Now we come to number 17, and perhaps the most, in my eyes, overrated bank chest in the game, the Crafting Guild. And look, it's fine to me to have areas that are restricted, areas you can't get into unless you complete something else or do something else, but I think it's ridiculous to demand that you should have to wear a brown apron in order to be in here. I mean, for what purpose? The bank chest itself is very unremarkable. If you walk outside to the area where you mine these rocks, it really does just look kind of like a prison courtyard. I mean, look how high these walls are. This might as well be barbed wire at the top of this wall. This is also probably the number one bank for higher level players to use for convenience. So this bank chest is just highly trafficked and used for convenience. It's kind of like the Burger King of bank chests, except if you had to wear a tuxedo every time you went into the Burger King or they wouldn't let you in. Now it's not all terrible. This room is actually not a complete disaster. There's also this nice little windowed area where you look out and there's cows and you're looking out to the ocean and the sea. It's honestly one of the best views from any guild. So I don't want to sound like this area is is all bad, but I do want to just say that if this is your favorite bank chest, please rethink that. Please rethink that thought. This should not be your favorite bank chest. It is objectively and unequivocally not a great bank chest. At number 16, we have the Ruins of Camdozel. Ruins of Camdozel, it's a good looking bank chest. It's one of the more unique ones we see. We only see this style of bank chest in a couple of other areas. The colors here are absolutely fantastic. Yes, you're in an area very similar to like the mining guild where it's an enclosed area. However, the space just feels bigger. It feels a little brighter with the colors and it feels a little more thoughtful. There's also just some really nice detail around here. This area is lit by these kind of blue flamed torches that kind of sway back and forth. Sometimes, you know, if you've been standing out in the sun all day, you want to come to a darker, cooler space. And I think this is one of the better spaces like that. All right, coming in at 15, we have Rogue's Den bank chest. Now this bank chest on paper is not a great bank chest. However, I think the longer you bank stand here, the more you enjoy it. There's something about coming down a trap door. You know, there isn't a guild for thieves, but this kind of feels like it. It feels like you're I don't know, a little bit of a part of something when you're down here, even if you're just standing at the bank. Although if you're gonna bank stand down here, I would not recommend keeping anything in your back pockets. Coming in at number 14, we have Mount Karul. Now, most of the points for this place really come from the aesthetic of it. The chest itself looks great with that gold symbol on the top. The pole booth has an animal skull on it. I think that that's cool. It's unique, it's different. The view outside of this bank chest is 
in my opinion, very underrated. And the surrounding aesthetics with the blue pool and fire, it just looks great. Now, I will say you're gonna get a lot of traffic of people doing Slayer tasks and things like that up here, but in my opinion, it's not too heavy and it makes for some good conversation at times. Now coming in at number 13, and I had a, a difficult time rating this one, but this is the Moral Wreck Bank Chest. There are actually two of these in Moral Wreck. They both are very similar. This bank chest is, at first glance, nothing too special. However, I really love the aesthetic of this bank chest. I think the, the dark red against the red and black walls and floors, it just looks great. This is such a different vibe than any of the other bank chests in the game, so for that it does deserve a high rating. I don't think this is a bank chest you need to stand at 24-7, but I like to have a healthy rotation of bank chests that I like to stand at. To kind of throw in the rotation when I'm bank standing. Try one, then try another, then move on to another. This would be a great one to throw in the rotation. Now coming in at number 12, we have the Myths Guild. The Myths Guild is a really cool place. The view from this bank chest is fantastic. It is a great view. I really think this would be be one of the best bank chests in the game if it was not for this furnace directly next to the chest. Now I know people love this bank chest for that reason. They love to be able to cook and bank so easily. In my opinion, we should completely get rid of this little stove here and just have the bank chest right where it is nothing else around it. When it comes down to efficiency versus aesthetic, I'm choosing aesthetic every single time. Aesthetic with a bank chest matters. Fuck efficiency. Fuck this furnace. Even with that said, it is still a very, very good bank chest. Now moving on to the number 11 bank chest, just outside the top 10, we have the Fossil Island Volcano bank chest. I think this is one of the most well-rounded bank chests in the game. It's in a fairly unique location in the game. You're not going to find this kind of vibe everywhere. Sometimes you get a lot of player traffic here for things like stars, example A, and at other times you're going to be by yourself for hours. There's a nice amount of detail surrounding this bank chest with these barrels and crates and pickaxes. You've also got a nice view of the ocean. The heat from the volcano really isn't reaching this far down to the bank chest, so you're not going to get too overheated working over here. I really do think that this is a more slept on and underrated bank chest. Now, ladies and squirrels, we enter the top 10 of bank chests in old school RuneScape, starting with number 10, Ferox Enclave. Now, even I am a little bit surprised that Ferox Enclave cracked the top 10, but this bank chest is so, <laughs> it's just so different. It is so chaotic here, but kind of in the best way. It's perfect people watching. It's like putting a bank chest in a suburban Walmart. You just kind of want to look around all the time. So if you're looking to get some people watching done, this is definitely the bank chest for you. Ferox Enclave is also just a very iconic place in RuneScape. There's a lot going on here. There's a lot to admire around you and you will see some things that surprise you. I will definitely tell you that. Now coming in at number nine, we have the Ruins of Unka. I had a difficult time with this one, truthfully. I couldn't decide if I hated it or if I loved it at first and I landed on I think I love it. The people here are very kind. It's obviously right next to the ocean and this just feels like a very nice little oasis from the desert heat. The crumbled wall, the cactus, the palm tree. It's very clear what they were going for here and I really do think they pulled it off. This is a great bank chest to stand at and get some things done. Not on a Temp Ross world, I wouldn't recommend. Coming in at number eight, we have the Hosidius Beach Bank Chest. Really, there are only two negatives that I can think of for this place. One being, if you do not get along with this fella right here, you're probably not going to want to hang out here too long. Second, if the furnaces over here get a little too hot or maybe make a little too much noise, that could be distracting if you're trying to get some tasks done. Otherwise, you just have this perfect, perfect location on the beach. And to me, the best part is it feels really tucked away with this wall that backs up to the furnaces. It kind of just feels like it closes you in a little bit in a good way. So I definitely recommend coming down here, saying hi to Smoggy, saying hi to some starfish, and standing at this bank chest for a little bit. It is incredibly pleasant. Number seven, and this one may surprise some people, the Woodcutting Guild Int Dungeon. Now, full transparency, until a few days ago, I did not know that this bank chest existed. But I tested it out, and I gotta say, I am very about it. First of all, if you are looking for a secluded place, you want to be alone with your thoughts, have no fear, find yourself at this bank chest. Nobody's coming down here and these ants really don't make too much noise. Now they do stamp around pretty loud, but you get used to that. It turns almost to white noise after a while. Once you climb over these roots, just head on over to the bank chest and it just starts to feel like you're in your own kind of rocky, <laughs> a little bit muddy office space. Because I can guarantee you're probably gonna have this place to yourself for quite some time. Really cool down here great bank chest. Now number six, we have the museum camp found on Fossil Island. This one gets bonus points for me because as a player, you have to build this bank chest yourself. So it always feels pretty good to, you know, build something and actually put it to use. And that's what we're doing here with this bank chest. It also looks pretty good. Now what I don't love about it, 
you're sharing the space with a couple of beds. But my God, I mean, there's a dog you can pet in here and he's very sweet. You walk outside, you're right on the beach, right next to the ocean. You can clean some fossils if you want to, or you can leave that to the scrubs. It doesn't matter. Just enjoy yourself out here. This is a terrific, terrific bank chest. Now at number five, we have the farming guild. This is a terrific bank chest. It's found in the second tier of the farming guild. You're next to a beautiful running fountain. You've got green all around you. These windows are obviously glass, so a ton of great natural light is gonna come through. And when you're standing at this bank chest, you look out to your right, out the window, and there's just butterflies and wildlife and a campfire. And it also feels a little tucked away, which is nice as well. The farming guild bank chest is very deserving of its number five ranking. Now moving on to the number four, ranking we have the island found out past fossil island this one's actually not listed on the bank chest in the wiki so i'm not sure why that is but this is a terrific terrific bank chest it's simple you know what you're getting you know what you're coming out here for you want to feel like you're on the ocean and honestly i don't think i need to say a lot about this this is such a uniquely cool place to bank but i will say the aesthetic of the bank chest with the seaweed and the starfish on top just really adds to it so your number four bank chest out on the island it is a terrific terrific option now coming in at number three and this may be controversial but we have the two bank chests in the sepulcher mausoleum and now i could be wrong but i think a lot of people are going to hate this choice and i'll just say i'm clearly biased here i love this room i love this aesthetic i think it's my favorite aesthetic in the game you have the statues the flowers the gold the pink the gray it just looks so good. I think it's cool that there are two bank chests in this room that seems to work extremely well. I think this room is also well lit. I like the candles on the ground. I love the flame from the torches. This is a spectacular room. These are great bank chests. All right, coming in at number two, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but number two is the Lands in Bank Chest. What is going on? Why is this one so high? This is unquestionably the most underrated bank chest in the game. I would venture to say the traffic to this bank chest is very minimal. You're not gonna experience a lot of competition in this room. Now, Hugor is in this room and he has been crushing drinks all day, but you will get along with Hugor, I promise. He is a friend to everyone. Now, the room's a little busy. We have some furniture, some pieces around. There's a crossbow on the ground. There's paper kind of thrown on the ground, but honestly, it just kind of feels like it's a friend's house that you're going to. Sure, there's some things that you wouldn't put in your house, but you know, whatever. It's your buddy's house and who cares? You've got a great view of the ocean in this place. There's sunflowers growing right outside the building. This is a great, great, great bank. It's fantastic over here. It is quaint, it is beautiful, and honestly, it's relatively solitary, except for Hugor, which, let me just tell you, he will get you drunk, so be careful. Now, if I failed to articulate this well, let me just tell you, please come stand and use this bank chest just for a little while and you will see what I'm talking about. And coming in at number one, the best bank chest in old school RuneScape, it is found on Zaya in Hasidius at the Vinery. That's right, the number one bank chest in the game is the Vinery in Hasidius. Just look at this place, look at that. Look at that. The grass looks nice, even the dirt looks nice. The bank chest is out of the way from people farming, but close enough to where you can keep in contact and have conversation with them. You face forward, you're looking at sunflowers, you look behind you, you're looking at grapevines and beautiful flowers. I mean, this place is just absolutely perfect. It just really is. Now, I would tell you to comment below and let me know what I got wrong, but let's be honest, I didn't get anything wrong. So I really hope I'll see you next video when we continue our banking critiques and we move on from the bank chests back to the banks. Mm -hmm.